know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. With its fine chandeliers, wall murals and tiles, the Royal Opera House of Mumbai reflects the opulence of a bygone era. But it hasn't been a bed of roses for this once iconic building where Mahatma Gandhi addressed audiences, Lata Mangeshkar started out and many an opera were once performed. Inaugurated by King George V in 1911, it was closed down in 1993 because people just stopped coming. Since then, it has been restored and revived. The comeback of Mumbai's Royal Opera House has a lot of lessons for anyone looking at how to make heritage properties, especially privately owned ones, viable. It all boils down to intent, vision and the right team. Owned by the erstwhile royals of Gondal, a lot went in to restore the Opera House. We've got a long association with this property. We bought it in the 50s and then it was running as a cinema. And when the cinema stopped, the theatre stopped. <laughs> and now we've renovated it. My very good friend Sharda Devedi, who she's a, she writes many books, and she introduced us to Abha Narayan, which I got along very well with her, and she is the one who's done this. It's the jewel of Bombay, and we like to do it, I mean, continue with this. The restoration of the Opera House was painstakingly done over seven years. An estimated 15 crore rupees was spent by the family. But the restoration has been only one part of the Opera House's success. What has been as important is how it has been made relevant to a new audience. A couple of things which I've always believed in for my curatorial vision, which we've implemented here, is working collaboration, trying to open up your stage and your venue and making it as de democratic as possible, inviting many more people into the conversations from different walks of life. You have to have an eclectic, diverse array of programming for diverse set of audiences because one size doesn't fit all. I think um, it, you can't expect the millennials and their, their parents and grandparents to come for the same program. Sometimes they will. But so you offer a, a wide variety of programs. And you know, my way of curating is we always defy, do things that defy categorization. I love mixing the traditional with the contemporary. I love pushing envelopes a little as much as I can. Um, so I think the, that that's created um, a very interesting mix of audiences and they keep coming back and you know you make it a place where you want to come and work at, a place you want to come and be at, you where you want to come and consume at and I think um, and with the right team and the right attitude in place I think we've been very successful and very humbled by this amazing response we've received. Since its launch, the Opera House has held hundreds of shows that range from theatre performances, children's festivals to book launches. The idea has been to draw in different kinds of audiences and widen the base. This is an over 100 year old building. It is what it is. It's a 575 seater. It's a walk up. It's got fantastic sound. It's got a lovely stage. It's not that huge compared to the other stages which now some productions need. It is what it is. It's got an orchestra pit which many places don't have. So, you know, you customize, either you customize your show to, or your program to what this place has to offer or it may not work for you. But you know, I, I, to, to be very honest, people actually curate their programs or curate their shows based on or customize their shows based on this venue. I just feel like, yeah, there are newer venues out there, but it depends. You know, there's also the romance of the old. And you know, it, once you come in here, yes, it is a beautiful old building but it's got state-of-the-art technology in it. So very often is people customize the kind of program, the approach um, to the venue. I think you have to involve the community and the ecosystem, your immediate community and your ecosystem, because they are your stakeholders. Yes, you will have groups coming in and going out, 
but they are your people who are going to come in. They are your locals. I think if you have the support of that, it will work. So the idea is you have to look at what people want and what people want also changes. I mean, it changes every six months. So you also have to evolve your programming strategy. You have to keep abreast with what is happening. And you know, to be honest, I think this is such a lovely collaborative ecosystem that you know, people come to you, you don't even have to go chasing people, you know. Um, as long as people know you're open, flexible, uh, and, and you'll share the same goal of trying to present the best of talent and, and democratize the arts, give people access which they don't have, I think it all works out. The arts is not a formula, it's not a business plan. And this is not some cash rich, you know, money being thrown at it, programming kind of thing. You have to do it month by month, quarter by quarter, get the right programs, look at trends, look at opportunities, look at what people want, um, looking at, uh, and you know, and that's how your programming will evolve. And as your programming evolves, your audience evolves and you evolve. I think the fundamentally important, if you ask me three things, is your, is your ecosystem, is your collaborators, and is your team. You have those three in place and your, if you have your, your heart is in the right place, it all just works out. While just three years old in its new avatar, the Royal Opera House has managed to make a comeback in Mumbai. And how it has done it is a great example for other properties that are struggling to survive. In India, there are thousands of heritage properties that are owned by private owners who don't have either the inclination or the resources to restore their heritage properties. Take for example, the world-renowned Fort Palace at Bundi, filled with the most exquisite art. It is considered one of the most fragile monuments, despite the fact that it attracts thousands of tourists each year. Perhaps the owners of the Bundi Fort can learn from the success of how this old landmark, Mumbai's Royal Opera House, was restored and revived.